Hello, Hey Boomer community. My name is Wendy Green, and I am your host for Hey Boomer. And Hey Boomer is a show for those who have already are tran transitioned or who, who are getting ready to transition, sorry about that, to retirement and are asking themselves, what's next? So we cover a lot of topics on this show, and this month we are focusing on health. We're going to, we have a guest that's talking about mental health. We're talking about physical health today. We've talked about relationship health. We're going to be talking about emotional health. So our goal, my goal with Hey Boomer is to leave the audience inspired that this next chapter of your life can really be a fulfilling and meaningful chapter of your life. Hey Boomer is brought to you by Road Scholar, the not-for-profit leader in educational travel for boomers and beyond. They offer expert-led adventures to all 50 states and more than 100 countries. To learn more, you can go to road, R-O-A-D, scholar.org slash hey boomer that's going to take you to the national parks page because that's my bucket list but you can look at all of their trips local and international and online if you just go to road scholar.org slash hey boomer so when i was preparing the topics for this month of health i knew that i wanted to talk about uh, healthy eating Nearly 43% of adults aged 40 to 59 are overweight or obese. And among those 60 and older, 41% are obese. As part of the Hey Boomer community, living healthy lives is part of living meaningful, fulfilling lives. And I know that we have all tried a multitude of diets with mixed success. So when I read about the Whole Body Reset program in the AARP magazine, I felt confident that this would be a reasonable program based on science and not the diet of the month. I am really looking forward to sharing some of what I learned when I read the book, The Whole Body Reset, and introducing you to one of the co-authors today, Heidi Skolnick. So who is Heidi Skolnick? She is a nutritionist and exercise physiologist, and she has appeared on national media, including the Today Show, Live with Kelly and Michael, and the Food Network. Heidi oversees performance nutrition at the School of American Ballet and the Juilliard School, and has been part of the Women Sports Medicine Center at the Hospital for Special, Special Surgery for over 20 years. She previously served as team nutritionist for the New York Giants, the New York Knicks, and the New York Mets. She sits on the advisory board of the National Menopause Foundation and served on the board of the National Osteoporosis Foundation for 10 years. Heidi is the author of Grill Yourself Skinny, and co-author of Nutrient Timing for Peak Performance and the Reverse Diet, as well as the co-author of The Whole Body Reset, which is what we're talking about today. So as part of today's show, I am offering two copies of The Whole Body Reset to my listeners. To get a copy, here's what you need to do. You first need to send an email to your friends and family and invite them to subscribe to Hey Boomer. And the link is on the screen. It's bit.ly slash heyboomer dash subscribe. Copy me on the email that you send so that I know who asked friends to subscribe. I promise not to email your friends, but by the end of the week, I will see who got the most friends and family to subscribe, and the top two listeners will win a copy of the Whole Body Reset. So looking forward to giving these books away because you're going to love them. 
But before I bring Heidi on, let's do my uh, never too old stories. So the first one is about a man named Hugh Calkins. And Hugh practiced law for more than 30 years in Cleveland, Ohio. He originally studied engineering at Harvard and was editor of the Harvard Crimson. He graduated early and enlisted in the Air Force. And when he was out of the service, he went to Harvard Law School. When he retired from his law practice, Hugh went to John Carroll University to get a teaching credential, and he taught math at inner city schools in Cleveland. Eventually, he started a charter school and ran an organization called Initiatives in Urban Education. Upon his death at 90, Hugh's son wrote, he cared deeply about injustice, poverty, the rule of law, and the right of every child to a high quality education. So how cool is that? He totally reinvented himself from a lawyer to a teacher and an advocate for quality education. I, I loved that story. My second story is about Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett, who you all know, she was born in 1933 and started out as a shy, sad girl whose parents were alcoholics. She was raised by her grandmother. At UCLA, she studied theater arts and English, but she left early to move to New York and pursue musical comedy. Her first real success came in 1959 in a musical comedy called Once Upon a Mattress, for which she was nominated for a Tony Award. She then became a regular on The Gary Moore Show and appeared in the special Julie and Carol at Carnegie Hall with Julie Andrews. The Carol Burnett Show debuted in 1967, over time won 23 Emmy Awards, and the show ended in 1978. So that's just 11 years, and it seems like it was on like so much longer than that. But it certainly has continued in vindication. In, tw in syndication. In 2017, at 84, CBS aired the Carol Burnett Show 50th anniversary special. And during this show, Carol said, they said that variety comedy shows were a man's game because it hadn't been done before by a woman. But that doesn't mean it couldn't be done. And Carol sure proved that it could. She is now 89 years old and still going strong. So let me invite Heidi to join us. Hello, Heidi. Hello, I'm inspired. Those I know, right? Yeah. It's, it's very exciting to always find these great stories. And so you are going to inspire people too, though, with this I book. Hope, and, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm sure of it. Just from the little bit I know about you, I've really enjoyed that. So. So you have written a few other books, Heidi, about nutrition and diet and exercise and all that. So what, why now, why a new book about the whole body reset? Let me show it to people. Thank you. Uh, well, to begin with, actually, I got a call from Steve Perrine, who is the co-author, and he is an executive editor at AARP. And the question that he felt he fielded all the time from their 38 million, you know, members was I used to be thin and now I'm not, you know, I eat the same, I exercise the same, what's going on. And he is a, a journalist and he has been in this space for a long time, but he felt like he wanted to reach out to someone who is more steeped in the science. And I have to say the science is really strong in this book. Every single line has been fact-checked, which I appreciate. And I had known Steve from the early days uh, and, and on up. And so he reached out and I was so excited because, you know, I've aged in. <laughs> That's right. and so this is near and dear to myself, my body, my friends, my colleagues. Um, you know, this is an important, this is really an important topic. And the science isn't, there's parts of it that are very new. There are parts of it that have been established for a while. But nobody, as you know, and as our listeners, your listeners know, we are not uh, a particularly of the age where a lot of media pays attention. Popular consumer driven media is geared toward younger people, as are the diets out there. Mm -hmm. And so 
this whole idea, and we'll get into a protein pacing and maintaining muscle is just essential to our health and well-being. And it, and I'm thrilled to be able to have a platform in which to share this information. It is so steeped in science that's really did impress me and help me absorb the information. You know, like, I mean, I can read one of these other diet books. They'll tell you what to do, but not why. So I really did appreciate it. And the truth is often... You know, there are some, and again, I don't, I don't know how much you want me to jump ahead. I'll, I'll even say there's something like, let's say the Mediterranean diet, which has a lot of science behind it for sure. Um, and a hundred percent could get behind that and support that and that style of eating, but it still doesn't address our needs of, you know, midlife and beyond. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this does, whatever, you know, in the whole body reset, whatever you want to follow, whether it's vegan, whether it's vegetarian, whether it's the DASH diet, whether it's the Mediterranean diet you'll learn how to adapt it for the needs as you age. And yeah. that's really important. And then of course, there are a lot of diets out there that are not steeped in science that are just mm -hmm. um, that you may lose weight, but that doesn't mean you're losing healthy weight or becoming healthier for having lost weight. In fact, you're losing a, a lot of muscle. Yeah. And I appreciate that. But I want to start with the question that probably most of us have. Mm -hmm. And that is the whole idea of, our metabolism slowing down. And that's why we right. are eating the same way and doing it and we're not losing weight, we're gaining weight. So yeah. would you address that? And it's it's interesting um, because even the, the lead researcher um, that came out with this really landmark study in 2021 said he thought it was gonna be about metabolism. When we started writing the book, we thought it was gonna be about metabolism. And it turns out our metabolism does not slow down as we age. And and, and so what that means is, is that any individual cell is still able to metabolize and do what it needs to do, right? So that doesn't happen until after 60 and even then, not so much. So it is not our metabolisms. It's something else. And what that something else is, is starting between ages 30 and 40, a natural part of aging is we begin to lose muscle. You know, when we're younger, we're in a growth phase. And then we slow down and our muscles turning over, but we don't build it back. We don't maintain or build it back. So every year we lose a little less than seven, about 7.7%, 7, um, a little less than 1% of our muscle every year. So you can imagine between 40 and 60, that's a significant amount of muscle. And as we, you know, 60 on now, it doesn't mean that's not inevitable. There's something we can do about that um, to maintain our muscle. But as we lose muscle, then our metabolism slows only because we don't have as much metabolically active tissue in our body, right? Our, our, our fat is, is, is uh, not as metabolically active. It's our muscle that is. And it, it does not lose its ability to, our, our metabolism, right? Again, doesn't change, but we don't have as much muscle that is metabolically active. Okay, so let me let me see if I understand. Okay, because like I've already seen a comment here. What well, not metabolism? <laughs> right? Like all of us love that as our excuse, but I think what you're saying is, by losing muscle, it's not that our metabolism is slowing down, but the ability of our cells to metabolize is not as efficient. Is that what you're saying? No, our cells are as efficient. We just don't have as many of them because we lost the muscle. If we maintained our muscle, we would be fine. We would be the same. I mean, then there's hormones, there's some other things, but basically we would be the same. And so maintaining your muscle is what's so important. And that's what the whole body reset is really about is how to maintain your muscle, which will help you to combat and even reverse age related weight gain. Okay. All right. So a big part of this, mm -hmm. and, and you did stress that to me, like this is not all about just a weight loss diet. This is about optimum health and muscle retention. Or right. Build. Okay. Right. So protein timing, that's like yeah. a foundational part that of is. this. So what happens again, as we get older, you know, when you're young and you drink that glass of milk, eight grams of protein, it all, you know, you, you build muscle, right? You see these young kids and they're just like, wow. And then, but as we get older, we are what's called anabolic resistance. We don't, our muscle says like, hey, you know, you're gonna, I need a lot more than that to get going here. Mm. And so to press that muscle building button, you need more protein and you need it more often. So you need to have 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal. So 
in order to press that muscle building button, right? For your muscle to get over its resistance and for it to get out of bed, you know, <laughs> it, you, know it, you, need, you need to have enough. And that's more than when you were younger. So that 25 to 30 grams, you know, many people get up in the morning, let's say even, you know, aside from if you're eating donuts or croissant, you know, or something like that, even if you're eating a cup of oatmeal, which you think of as being nutritious, and it is nutritious, but there's not enough protein. It's not until you pair it with a cup of Greek yogurt or enough eggs, you know, a cheese omelet, right? So that, you know, really that oatmeal is the starchy part, that carbohydrate, that whole grain, but it's not a complete meal. And I think aside from just habit, there's also a diet mentality that goes on where people are like less, I, I don't want to eat a lot, but that's one of the beauties of the whole body reset. We're actually telling you to eat more. Right? You are. You'd eat more because diets are the worst for, for losing muscle and lowering your metabolism. You can already, you know, you can lower your metabolism by not eating enough and losing muscle. But again, it's not because your not, body's not able. And so we want you to eat more. We want you to hit that mark. And we also want you, we'll talk about fiber. But, um, you know, hitting that 25 to 30 grams. And for most people, you know, this is not a high protein diet. This is an adequate protein diet. Most people eat a lot of protein at dinner. They kind of save up and then they go, oh, I can relax and I can eat. And they, whether it's, you know, whether it's two or three chicken breasts or it's a big piece of steak or, you know, whatever it is that they eat, they eat enough protein. It's just that they don't distribute it mm. throughout the day adequately to be keeping your muscle in muscle building versus muscle breakdown. And when you miss that window, you miss that window. Like mm. you can't, you can't make up for it all at once at night. So you really need to be hitting this throughout the day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, even a little bit at snacks. So you're feeding your, your system so that it's metabolizing the protein and the carbohydrates all throughout the day is right. what you're saying. But the focus for pro so each, each food group, you know, does do something for your body, but the protein is what is imperative. This protein timing is what's really imperative to hit this 25 to 30 gram of protein per meal to maintain that muscle. And then we can also, again, talk about combining that with, with exercise and what type of exercise. Now, other food groups also help for different reasons. Um, fiber is really important. And fiber not only helps us to feel full, mm -hmm. which is great, but it serves many different functions. The foods that are higher in fiber are also most mostly nutrient rich. So it's giving us many nutrients that we absorb less of as we get older. It also feeds our mic our gut microbiome, right? Our gut health is crucial to our well-being as we age. And so our, our microbiome, which is filled with bacteria, some are good, some are not so good, but we need them. So we want to have more good than bad. Mm -hmm. And that affects our immune system. That affects our ability to digest. Like you and I can both um, eat a calcium rich food, but not absorb the same amount of calcium. If our gut health is not healthy, you know, if one of us is mm. gut microbiome and one doesn't, we're not going to absorb the same nutrients. So fiber really helps to feed our microbiome and keep the healthy bacteria working. And so is this just like the, the, um, raw vegetables, raw fruits, or can you also do supplements like the Metamucil supplements well, or those kinds of things? first is always important because we get a lot of nutrients in food. We're not just getting one thing. Um, and it doesn't have to be raw. I mean, cooking is a great way. In fact, again, we want you to have some good healthy fat. When you make a stir fry, adding some fat to that stir fry helps to, um, you absorb some of the fat soluble vitamins a, D, E, and K need some fat in there. For you to absorb vitamin D, you need some fat. Um, and healthy fats are also anti-inflammatory and seem to really help muscle, mm -hmm. which I don't think people think of, but really help muscle, the mitochondrial, stay active and healthy. And, and what do you call a healthy fat? Um, you know, avocado, olive oil, salmon, all of those. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you. Keep going, you know. Like, <laughs> you know. Uh, well, but um, yeah, you know, and then there's the nutrients that are in those fiber rich foods, but uh, I'll defer to you. And yeah, yeah. no, because yeah. you, you had said something about calcium earlier, which I know we get a lot of calcium from things like broccoli, but I, 
Also mm-hmm. in the diet, you talk a lot about dairy. Yes. And, you know, as someone who is, you know, watches my weight, I'm like, dairy? Like, that's high fat. Like, really? You want me to eat brie cheese and, you know, big whole food yogurt and stuff like that? Yes, yes. So, of course, there's yogurt. You can't have whole fat. You can't have low fat. That's based on your total diet and your choices and your preferences. Um, But dairy is a food that's very accessible, affordable, and very nutrient rich. So we need the calcium, which we absorb less of as we get older, and our needs become a little bit higher, especially for women post-menopause. We want to keep our bone health strong, and also adequate calcium is related to managing blood pressure. Um, but we also, so yes, so that's a great way to get it in. You need a lot of broccoli to reach the same (laughs) amount as you would through yogurt or milk or a piece of cheese. Um, so, you know, people have this all or none mentality, but having, you know, an apple with an ounce of cheese as a snack gives you some protein, gives you some calcium, gives you some fiber, and it's very satisfying and being satisfied, enjoying your food and being sated is a wonderful thing and in and of itself helps. And then things like yogurt, again, are uh, fermented and really help our our microbiome, our gut health. And so there's many reasons. It also, dairy is also high in an amino acid called leucine. And leucine happens to be a spark plug for muscle building. So it is not the only food that has it. Other foods have it as well, but it is a, a bit more abundant in, in uh, dairy and in animal protein, but it's also found in, in, in vegetable sources or plant-based sources, but it is very prevalent in dairy. And so, you know, it, this is a very inclusive diet and very expansive. But again, if you choose to be dairy-free, we give you lots of options for dairy-free. So it's, you know, if you wanna be plant-only, I think you can be plant-based without being plant-only. Right? You could be flexitarian. Um, uh, and because, again, there are so many nutrients and the broader the foods that you take in, the more choices you have, the more satisfying it is, the more the easier it is. You know, life is hard. So let's not make our eating any more difficult than it needs to be. Um, but whatever you choose, we give you choices. We give you options and we show you where you can get, you know, fiber, where you can get protein, including plant sources. Yeah, you do. You do a really good job of that. So <clears throat> one of the things in your book, like you mentioned, is the exercise portion of it. And like before we came on the air, you know, I was saying to you, I, I kind of fell out of exercise for a while because I've been sick. Mm-hmm. Now I'm better. But it's like, oh, gosh, how do I get started yeah. again? Yeah. So we'll talk about the exercise a little bit, Heidi. Well, first, of all, I think your experience is one that many of us go through, you know, whether it's because life gets busy and our schedules get disrupted or because there's an injury and you have to come back from an injury. So one is I think self-compassion is really important. Um, <laughs> instead of beating ourselves up is coming up with a strategy. I know for me, um, I, I was in a conference uh, in my earlier younger days and I was listening to the speaker talk about actually aging and exercise and the importance of it. And one of the things the speaker said was that what we do now predicts our vitality in 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. And that just really stuck with me. And it motivates me on the days that I don't really feel like getting going, you know, and my work is calling me or, you know, more sleep is calling to me or the couch and a TV show is calling to me. I think, you know, if I'm not going to exercise for my current self, I'm going to get moving for my future self. My future mm-hmm. self will thank me which is, you know, so far proven to be true. (laughs) So I, you know, there's lots of different ways to get moving. Also, I think scheduling it in, like if you have an appointment, you know, we're doing this now, you wouldn't schedule something else. You go, I'm busy. So nobody has to do your your, your calendar. Just say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy at 10. I can can meet you at 1130 or whatever your timeframe is. Um, And start in, you know, if you're coming back, you need to start slow. But the really important thing is it relates to the whole body reset is that many of us, I know I grew up in a cardio, you know, running, like if you had sneakers and running, that's all you needed. It was all about cardio, you know, get on the elliptical and go for an hour. It was cardio, cardio, cardio. And in fact, as we get older, we really need to be doing resistance training, strength training, 
to even if you're going to cut back on your cardio, if you only have a certain limited amount of time, make sure two to three times a week you are getting in resistance training that builds your muscle, that challenges your muscle. Your muscle responds to that challenge and it maintains or grows or builds muscle. And that with the protein timing is the winning combination to stay healthy. Because weight loss, you know, there are people who are normal weight obese, if that makes sense. You know, just being thin doesn't make you fit or healthy. It's about maintaining your muscle. Hmm. It really helps your blood sugar regulation, blood pressure, cardiovascular health, brain health. Like there's so many things, mobility, bone health, so many things. So make sure you get that resistance training in. And it's only two to three times a week. You can hit major muscle groups. You don't have to do your arms and your tricep, though. You know, those are the ones that many people go to first because it's aesthetic. But um, really hitting those major muscle groups is so important to your, to your well-being. So the muscle health, the muscle strength, it helps our diet. Does that, how does that, so if I'm not focusing on cardio mm -hmm. and I'm not counting calories, mm -hmm. how's that helping with the belly fat? Well, first of all, I'm not <laughs> saying that you don't need to do any cardio, right? Like, like there's three things around fitness in particular, but you know, yes, cardio. I'm just saying you don't have to do hours and get out there and do more and more and more okay. as, and, and to integrate doing some cardio and making sure what is really important is that you get in the strength training and then also balance as we get older, doing some balance. Exercise. And it only takes 10 minutes. Like, you don't, you can do it while you're watching TV or standing online, you know, a grocery store, but you really want to get in some balance exercises, which doesn't make you sweat. It doesn't make you feel like you're working hard, but it's really, really important. Yeah. So it's reframing how we, you know, I think just sometimes think about only cardio, you know, cardio is king um, yeah. when it comes to to movement. Um, and then for anyone who this is intimidating to just recognize that every movement, you know, all movement matters and that it's just important to move. Well, you have parts in here where you, you give an exercise program and you give it for beginner, intermediate and advanced. Right. It's really not hard. And you actually give like three different kinds, the, the hit, the resistance and the, um, what's the other one? Strength. Yeah. And so, okay. you know, this idea of high intensity, you know, the idea that we really do well with um, going a little higher intensity and that doesn't matter where you're starting. If you're walking, it's walking and then walking a little bit more, you know, a little more intense pace. You know, if you're jogging, then you also run. You know, if you're cycling, you do some intervals. So that the idea is that we can really get a lot out of, uh, it pushes us in a way, it stresses our body in a way that we respond. And, you know, exercise affects every single system in our body, including our brain. And, you know, it has been shown to help cognitive function. So again, there's just so many reasons to include movement. But I didn't see anything for like sit-ups, crunches to tighten my core. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, it, is that important too? Um, sure. That's part of strength training. Um, and there's a lot of different ways depending on where you are in bone health and all to, to work on your core and just managing your posture. And as you're doing whatever exercises you're doing, um, so yes, your core is, but the focus on core solely without, let's say, doing more strength training for major muscle groups, they, they're all connected and they're all, you know, the, the, it's all beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't talk about calories to your point, because I think calorie counting is very tedious. It's very micro. It really doesn't allow you to focus on the nutrients that you need. And I think, you know, I have found, and this has been one of the rewarding things with this book, you know, we did a panel with, um, AARP. Um, staff. We used a uh, hundred different uh, people uh, were part of this panel with wonderful results. So we did that before we really wrote the whole book. Um, we mm -hmm. took all the concepts and then we made sure that it was working. And then we, you know, put it in a format that you, that was out there and you all will see, but we had great results. And then the book came out and you go, okay, well, that was still, we were, you know, that was a, a panel that weren't handpicked. It was like, we were there encouraging them. What will happen now when it's out in the world? And the feedback has been so wonderful. And in fact, I just did an interview with a doctor for um, Reach MD, And he, he too had personally experienced the book with success. 
and is now using it in his practice because many primary care physicians actually counsel around weight management and health and movement and has found it to be so simple and not complicated because there's really only two things you really, I mean, there's six different things we talk about, but there's two things you have to really focus on. And so that's been wonderful to see sort of that validation for the medical community and the application even in that world. Yeah. You know, one of the things that you put in here that I really have loved is that in the grocery store, if you look at the protein and you look at the fiber and then you look at the sugar, if the protein and fiber number is higher than the sugar number, you're good. Right. Like, right. Oh my gosh. I was like in bread, looking at the bread the other day. Yeah. It's like, well, let's see. That one's got six more. This one's got seven more. Oh, this one's, oh, this one's got 10. I'm going with that one. You know? Right. Right. So you add the protein, you add the fiber, and you make sure that number is greater than the amount of sugar. So it makes, it's sort of a decoder when you go to the, the supermarket. It's awesome. And my, my boyfriend is, he's like, add the protein, add the fiber. So say that's five and five, you got 10 and the sugar's two. That's good. So, right. That's, so he goes, oh good. It's a plus eight. <laughs> you okay. know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He subtracts the two. Right. So right. Yeah. So it's cool. It's a great way to go shopping. And, you know, and then the other thing we talk about is fruits and vegetables. If there's any diet that you are considering that cuts out fruits or vegetables or legumes, for that matter, um, you want to stay away. Right. That is, you know, fruits and vegetables are so rich in nutrients. Um, those in the whole grains provide what's called phytonutrients, which are phyto from the sun nutrients. There's all these compounds that really help keep our body healthy. And the dark green leafies, which aren't, aren't always very high in fiber, but do provide um, valuable folate, you know, vitamins that really help keep our brain healthy. And so, you know, again, as we get older, although this book is focused on muscle, we do attend uh, to other concerns and needs of our aging body, like calcium for bone health, vitamin D, um, all of the different, like B12, which is a nutrient we just don't absorb as much of as we get older, it becomes harder for us to absorb that. Some people may need a supplement that may be hard to get from food only, but that's only in animal food. So it isn't in plant-based foods, which is mm -hmm. another consideration if you're plant only to really make sure that you're getting in B12. So we do try to address um, many other nutrients that we care about as we age. And I do love that it, towards the front of the book, you have a, a you know, like a, a weekly what you can eat. And you have me going out to Wild Wings and Chipotle. <laughs> and I'm like, what? So how I so, mean, you can try to make it very simple. We are, we are realistic with how people's lives are. You know, some people cook all the time and we have all these recipes that we hope you enjoy and other people eat out more and some people do both. And so you're going to eat out. So how do you manage that? Whether it's, you know, at fast food or convenience dining or more fine dining, we give you the tools to be able to do this no matter where you go. There are choices you can make and ways that you can make it happen. You know, and, um, you know, as we acknowledge, you know, cupcakes happen, you know, birthdays happen, pizza happens, you know, so how do you manage that? Um, and, and it's not that, you know, when you said you don't have a counting calories, you're not counting calories, but of course portions, you know, matter or not, you know, but, but you'll find that when you're in, when you focus on what you should be including and can be including and is satisfying and your body, you know, is um, getting what it needs, a lot of those cravings become a lot less. And it's not hard. You know, you're feeling good. You're eating what your body needs. And so it's not so hard. You don't have, you know, when you eat more earlier in the day, which is, I think people find at first kind of stunning because they're not used to being sated early in the day. <laughs> they're used to sort of getting their hunger up, up and up by the time dinner comes. And then they do what I call refrigerator surfing, you know, after dinner, <laughs> like they've eaten, but they're still, um, that becomes less right? That, that urge to do all that just big. When you eat early in their day, you're, you're not as hungry. You're still hungry. You want dinner, but you you don't have that insatiable hunger. Yeah. And I really have enjoyed some of the recipes in here, but I also appreciate that there's a whole um, summary in the back that shows the different protein levels of so many different foods. So, you know, I have friends on watching now that are vegetarian and, mm -hmm. um, 
or vegan even, you know, so they can still do this protein timing, get enough protein, get enough fiber, get enough Mm -hmm. non-dairy foods. Yeah. You know, one of the challenges, again, are even people, whether they're vegan, vegetarian, carnivores, whatever, you know, they might get a salad, let's say, think, you know, I want to be healthy. But their salad has maybe a quarter cup of beans and a sprinkle of cheese and lots of lettuce and vegetables. Um, and that may seem, again, healthy. And of course, it is nutritious, but there's not enough protein in there. You're not hitting that 25 grams. So unless you're going to put in tofu or you're going to put in a cup and a half of beans or stack it where it's a, you know, a half a cup of beans and an ounce of cheese and an ounce of nuts, you know, you have to stack it in a way to hit the mark. Mm. And then you talk about hemp seed and flax seeds too, right? As a big part of how to add additional protein to the it's diet. One option. It's one option. It's not for everyone, but it is an option, especially those who are, who are plant-based to, and, but for everyone, you know, is one more option as a way to sort of top off the, to, you know, hit that protein mark. And, it, you know, for many people, um, smoothies in the morning, like if you're not used to eating a breakfast, I love a big breakfast in the morning. I look forward to that. Um, <laughs> or in a hearty or substantial one, because it doesn't really have to be that big. I mean, a cup of yogurt and berries and some nuts. Um, that's what I had. That <laughs> um, but for some people, you know, having a smoothie really works for them. And we give a lot of recipes on smoothies and using a protein powder. Again, mm-hmm. some people like it, some people don't. It's okay, whatever works for you, but it's convenient. And it is a way to hit your protein mark in the morning if you're on the go or you just, you know, you don't really, you know, you just don't wake up with an appetite. Um, although sometimes people who eat late at night, they're not as hungry in the morning. And when they begin to shift, so they're eating more, um, their calories are more evenly distributed throughout the day, find that they do wake up more hungry. Yeah. That's and another thing, smoothies, whether or as a snack in the afternoon, you know, it all works. Smoothies. And you and you even had suggested um, protein powder in oatmeal. So you're still getting the, you know, the benefits, the heart healthy benefits of the oatmeal. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, I, I also want to mention this idea of, of um, <clears throat> the breakfast because, you know, intermittent fasting is one I find of particular interest to people at our age um, is the dietary, you know, they've heard it out there and there's lots of different variations on the theme for those of you who aren't familiar are, you know, intermittent fasting can be where you um, eat within a certain window of time, like between, you know, 12 and eight, or it could be a five hour window, or you might skip days or even fast on a day or so. So there's lots of different variations. But it really, a a study just came out, another one that we quote in our book, you know, that came out, and I think it was in JAMA, um, Journal of the American Medical Association, very well done, and it looked at a control group and the intermittent fasting group, which basically means you're missing breakfast. And um, when they were both calorically even, both groups lost weight. Like there was no magic. It wasn't more weight loss with intermittent fasting. When it was when it was controlled and both were having the same amount of calories, both groups lost weight. But the control group maintained, and by eating three meals a day, maintained more muscle. So when you lose weight, you lose muscle no matter what, it's how much. So the, the intermittent fasting group lost 60% muscle. Wow. percent fat. And the control group lost 30% muscle, which meant they named, I mean, 30%, yeah, 30% Le- muscle and 60 and, and 70% of fat. So well, big, big, big difference. Yeah. So I do not recommend for our age group intermittent fasting. Um, yeah. I, I think you can use sleep as in, you know, if you can stop eating after dinner and then wake up the next day, that's your intermittent fasting. You know, there you go. Hours. There's even some evidence though for some people who are really losing muscle and sarcopenia that having a that having a higher protein snack before bed can be beneficial and not affect weight. Mm. So 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 Heidi, if we have not been exercisers uh-huh. for years, mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. so we've lost a lot of muscle already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How possible is it that we can regain some of that? 
totally possible. Isn't the body is amazing. And the studies have been done to octotarians, like, you know, into your eighties and nineties, that when you add resistance training, your body responds. Now, again, you might have to start at a lower level and slowly and gradually build up. You don't want to overload without building. You might want to reach out to someone, to an exercise specialist who really understands our age group or whatever other limitations you may have. You might want supervised, you know, training and to go slower and build up. But the fabulous news is our body responds and you can gain strength no matter what your age. That's, that is inspiring. <laughs> I didn't like that. Yeah. And we can live strong, vital, healthy, you know, engaged lives. We all want, you know, we all want, I think I'm going to project and say, we all want the same things, right? We want, well, you know, some people want to climb mountains and some people just want to climb steps. You know, and some people want to be able to get on the floor with their grandchildren and others right. might want to go on longer bike rides. So maybe we don't all want the same thing, but but we want to be engaged in whatever whatever choices, whatever lifestyle we have. We want to, right. be able to do it and do it fully. Yeah, totally. So we are getting to the end of time. So I always ask my guests mm -hmm. to give me two or three takeaways that really bring um the message to the to the audience. Well, you, this is simple. You can start with breakfast tomorrow, right? Just hit, start, just start with one goal that's doable for you. And again, I think I think in the book we do a good job at sort of helping you begin to identify where you can make small changes with big impact, right? So start with breakfast. Hit that protein mark. Um, look at those fiber sources and begin to just swap out to foods that you like and enjoy, but you may just not include. So there's a little bit thought there and that, oh, I do actually like that. I can do that. And by hitting your fiber, your protein and your fiber marks, you know, you are on your way. And then, of course, I'm going to say that to begin to get moving, hopefully add if you if you're only to do one thing, add some resistance training. Yeah. So um, you can see that I am sharing with how you can get in touch with Heidi. So it's Heidi Skolnick, S-K-O-L-N-I-K.com. You can find her on her website and on Instagram and Twitter. It's at Heidi Skolnick. Thank and, you, Andy. Yeah. And remember, if you want to win one of the two copies, which is now a New York Times bestseller. We didn't even mention that. That's right. It's how exciting is that? It's been on the New York Times bestseller list for six weeks. I know. That's yeah. fabulous. So if you'd like to win one of the two copies of The Whole Body Reset, email your friends, ask them to subscribe at heyboomer.com biz slash subscribe or at bit.ly b-i-t dot l-y slash hey boomer dash subscribe copy me on the email so i know who you invited and i know how many people at the end of the week have had people subscribe and then i will send you a copy of this book which you will love and remember to support our sponsor roadscholar.org by going to roadscholar.org r-o-a-d scholar.org slash hey boomer so next week we're going to be focusing on happiness and mental health with my guest randy k randy is the author of two books ben behind his voices one family's journey from the chaos of schizophrenia to help hope and happier made simple choose your words change your life so we are going to be talking about the happier made simple, which as you can imagine for a parent of somebody that is struggling with schizophrenia has been a journey. And many of the um, tips that she gives in the book are simple yet great reminders. And, you know, we always need to kind of rethink about our mindset. So I think you will enjoy that show. If you want to support the work and the mission of Hey Boomer, the easiest and most impactful thing you can do is just subscribe to the email list or get your friends to subscribe to the email list and subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave a review. Also supporting our sponsors, you know that always helps um, them to see that they are appreciated. And uh, thank you all for tuning in today. Thank you, Heidi, for being our guest. It's been a pleasure.
Thank you. It has been a pleasure. And as I always do, I like to remind you to live with passion, live with relevance, and live with courage. And remember, you are never too old to set another goal or dream a new dream. My name is Wendy Green, and this has been Hey Boomer.